Hey guys. <clears throat> Sorry, I still don't have a voice yet. Um, okay, today we are learning about ethical fallacies. It is a late start, so I am taping this from my house, so I apologize in advance for this dog that's about to jump up here. Um, okay, so yesterday we learned about emotional fallacies, which would be pathos. Today we're learning about ethical fallacies, which would be ethos, um, which if you'll remember from last week is credibility, right? Um, the appeal to credibility. So first we have false authority. Um, that's when you ask the audience to agree with the assertion of a writer based simply on his or her character and the authority of another person or institution who may not be fully qualified to offer that assertion. Example, my high school teacher said it, so it must be true. We also do this with the internet a lot. You read it on Facebook, you read it on the internet. Um, there was dog. There was a scientific study done one time where a man in a lab coat came out and told people um, to, it. basically they had to turn up the pain on this thing and said it was hurting other people. And they heard the other people screaming in the other room. Um, and they were doing it anyway, because someone who they thought was a doctor was telling them and wasn't even a doctor. And as it turned out, and it was a test to see, this, the screams were fake, but it was the test to see how far a person would go if authority was telling them to do something. And many of them um, went to the highest level of pain and ended up believing that they actually killed somebody um, and did that. They kept going up just because the doctor told them to. Using authority instead of text evidence. That occurs when someone offers personal authority as proof. Example, trust me, my best friend wouldn't do that. Okay. Um, your word means nothing unless you pinky promise. Um, just kidding. That still means nothing. Guilty by association. Um, that's when you call someone's character in a question by examining the character of their associates. Okay. Um, Sarah's friend Amy robbed a bank. Therefore, Sarah is a delinquent. Uh, this happened to me, actually. I went to Walmart with a girl I went to high school with. Um, and we we're looking around and she was like, why don't you go? I had never been shopping with her before. Um, she said, why don't you go in the other aisle and grab this, whatever makeup we were looking for, and I'll, I'll get this stuff. And I was like, okay, sure. So I go off. I come back. And we're walking out the Walmart doors, and police officers stop us and pull us into a room. And she had stolen stuff. Um, and the one guy was like, why don't you empty your bag? You probably stole stuff too. And he was yelling at me. And I said, no, I didn't. And I couldn't believe he attacked my character. He said, well, you're friends with her. And I said, I didn't even know about this stuff. I didn't steal anything. And they were also being really mean to her. So I waited with her until her mom got there. As they should, like she shouldn't have stolen, but they were like grown men screaming at a 15-year-old girl, like just calling her a terrible person for stealing. It was kind of a bad situation. Dogmatism shuts down discussion by asserting that the writer's beliefs are the only acceptable ones. I'm sorry, but that's just my opinion. Okay, I hear you guys say this all the time. I'm sorry, but I think penguins are correct, and that's that. I mean, are sea creatures, and that's that. Um, moral equivalence compares minor problems with more serious crimes, or vice versa. These, this mandatory seatbelt law is fascist. Okay, no, it's not. Um, we could use some examples. Um, from modern day, I'm probably going to stop on that one. But you guys know you have heard these, okay? It's being compared to, uh, I, I heard somebody compare wearing a mask to being like a dog put in a cage and forced to wear a muzzle. Um, it's a bit dramatic. Um, okay. Ad hominem. Arguments attacks a person's character rather than a person's reasoning. Why should we think a candidate who recently divorced will keep her campaign promises? Okay. Um, this was used against Hillary Clinton when she was married to Bill Clinton. So you can't trust her. Her husband cheated on her and she stayed with him. She has no backbone. What kind of woman is that? that those were some actual things that were said about her. Um, and she came out and said, actually, I feel like I'm a strong person for staying with someone who cheated on me rather than weak. Um, but that was that was something that the other side used against her was she must be a horrible person because she's staying with a cheater. Or she's she's not strong enough. She doesn't have a backbone. Um, you're just attacking her character. Uh, straw person. 
It are arguments set up um, that often dismantle easily refutable arguments in order to misrepresent an opponent's argument um, to defeat them. So example, we need to regulate access to handguns. That's what one person says. Their opponent will take that and run with it, basically. My opponent believes we should ignore the rights guaranteed to us as citizens of the United States by the Constitution. Unlike my opponent, I'm a firm believer in the Constitution and a proponent of freedom. Okay, we hear this exact argument all the time. So they didn't actually say, my opponent believes we need to regulate the access or we need stricter gun laws. They're saying, my opponent obviously hates the Constitution, so... I love the Constitution. You know what I mean? They word it better so it doesn't sound um, as bad, but we hear that in pretty much every political debate out there. Okay, that is all for ethical fallacies. I would like you to take the ethical fallacies quiz, please, after you're finished reading Love is a Fallacy. It's an eight-page uh, story. We're reading the first four pages today. And we'll read the first four pages tomorrow, okay? Um, good luck. Let me know if you need help.